if you look at society over like you know five thousand years or however long humans have been in existence, like there's never been anything ever in a movement like what is going on right now as a as a live living breathing art community you know it's oh yeah it's 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 growing huge i don't know i mean you know i don't paintings paintings are are selling you know i mean i don't know it's a it's a crazy it's a crazy thing because the art behind the glass um it has such a high demand Mm -hmm. and it reaches so fast you know what i mean like there are people that spend you know hundreds of thousands of dollars on paintings but they're few and far between right but I have, if these glass reaches all demographics, like you're able to reach everybody from banjo to the production guy down the street. You know what I mean? It's pretty crazy. This is the Wise Guy Radio Show, a podcast dedicated to educating and inspiring through conversations with today's top talents in the world of glass. We will be dissecting their journeys in hopes to deliver actionable content that you, the artist, can start implementing now, helping you grow not only as a creative spirit, but also a successful artistic entrepreneur. With a little organization, relationship building, and your artistic ability, you can obtain greatness. Climb aboard, whether an artist, retail owner, or enthusiast. We have a ton of fun in store for you. Welcome to the Wise Guy Radio Show. This episode of the Wise Guy Radio Show is sponsored by Wise Guy Media a new company dedicated to showcasing the talents and offerings of their customers through podcasting, eye-catching graphics, logo, and customized web design. Established in 2015, Wise Guy Media is continuing to push the elements of web and logo design with outside-of-the-box ideas and up-to-date graphic-generating programs. Whether you want to launch your own podcast, need a website, or a new logo for your brand, they have all your needs covered to promote yourself and get your brand recognized in your industry. To see what they've been up to, check out their site, www.sonyamedia.com forward slash wise guy for a sample of what they've been doing to help get this podcast off the ground. That's www.sonyermedia.com forward slash wise guy. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Wise Guy Radio Show, episode eight. Today's episode is featuring my boy Chris Dickey, also known as the Goblin King. Uh, he has a really fun story to share with you guys, uh, his humble beginnings, uh, where he's at now in his life and his glass career. Uh, he's been behind the torch now for four years, and officially he's been a professional for three. And uh, he's the kind of glass artist that really enjoys to share his progress. Uh, if you watch him on Facebook, uh, even last week he posted something that uh, his mom had found, one of his original uh, glass pieces that he made, uh, pipe-wise. And uh, he kind of did like a, a before and after posting of where he was and where he's at now. And it's pretty fun to see his progress. And uh, he gets into that a little bit in this episode. Uh, mainly with this first part of his show, we mostly talk about where he got his influences from. Uh, a little bit about the industry and where his perspective of the industry is and where it's going. And also he talks about the studio he works with and the guys he's surrounded by. And uh, some of the fun projects that he's been involved with this year. And... Uh, yeah, so it's, it's, it was a fun conversation because uh, Chris and I have known each other for a while, and uh, he, he basically got his initial influence and spark for the glass art as a child when he visited uh, Disney uh, back when he was eight years old and uh, stumbled across the glass blowers. One thing led to another, and he became uh, basically, I uh, wouldn't say addicted, but addicted, So, <laughs> for lack of a better term. Um, so it'll be a fun little show. Uh, also something fun today as well is I'm going to be chit chatting with Chip Steeler, also known as, uh, Shipwreck, uh, who does electroforming and copper plating. Uh, he is fresh back from the DFO this past weekend and, uh, his brother Murr, who tragically passed away a little bit over a year and a half ago, um, was one of the guys that really got the DFO going, uh, out in Oregon. And so uh, it's going to be fun to talk with Chip today, uh, talking about the show itself and where it's at. And also the, uh, they uh, uh, basically named uh, and dedicated an area, a pavilion, to Murr. Uh, Murr also, his name was Murr Monkey, was his glass name. And uh, Murr was a, big, was a big influence in my glass life and my early beginnings. Um, so uh, it's going to be an honor to talk with Chip today and kind of get his perspective 
on uh, where he's at now in the industry, being an electroformer and being one of the originals as well in the industry doing electroforming and copper plating. Um, so uh, other than that, um, also just don't forget, guys, uh, this Friday coming up, I'm going to have all the whole details set in stone for my 30-day challenge for July. Uh, since July 1st, I believe, is next Monday and coming quickly. Um, so basically, just kind of a real quick synopsis. Uh, what we're going to do is 30-day challenge in July, which basically is going to be 30 pendants, uh, one a day for 30 days. Uh, I want everybody to make a pendant to start your day off with. Uh, when you guys are done the next day, when it's out of the kiln and cool, I want you to send me a really good picture of it. Um, I went ahead and got an Etsy page started today. I was going between Big Cartel and Etsy and found Etsy is a little bit easier to work with because I am familiar with it. Uh, their fees are a little bit less as well, and I can put more stuff up there. Uh, hopefully, if it works out and you guys are want to be a part of this, um, you know, we'll have several hundred pendants a day going up, and we'll have a ton of glass to choose from. So I think it's going to be a pretty cool idea and concept. Um, I'm still working on out the financial aspect of the side of it um, in terms of payments for you guys. Uh, for when the sales happen, uh, whether you want the payment in full uh, after the Etsy charge or if you guys would like to help contribute uh, everybody together to uh, a fund of some sort that we can contribute to an organization uh, or something of that nature. So if you guys can please give me feedback, I really do uh, want feedback from you guys. Uh, without you and your input, uh, this isn't going to be possible. I'm going to be doing this myself along with you guys, uh, which is part of why I like this podcast so much is because I not only am uh, helping share wisdom and stuff, but I'm also participating in with it myself and learning from the guests that I bring on the show and talk to. So uh, if you guys can send me an email, please uh, contact me at jmichaelglass76 at gmail.com. That's J-M-I-C-H-A-E-L glass 76 at gmail.com. Uh, with any kind of ideas you guys have uh, input wise, please. Um, and also, if you are interested in becoming a sponsor for the show, we are now looking for sponsorships. Uh, now that we are two weeks into the show, we have close to a 1,000 downloads already, which is mind-blowing. You guys are amazing and rock, so thank you so much for that. Um, whether you are a tool company, a glass company, a manufacturer of what have you, or just a distributor of all the goods that we buy from, uh, if you guys would be interested in, in being a part of our show, uh, we not only have this podcast, but we have two websites and a newsletter that we're using for outlets for our uh, advertisement and for sponsorships. And Wednesday is going to be dedicated to uh, not only tip of the week and some information, but also to uh, product uh, talk, uh, whether it's about uh, product reviews or talking about uh, new products that are coming out, launches and stuff. So if you're a company and you have a new product line that you would like to get out to the masses, um, this is a really new outlet for you that uh, hasn't really been done yet, and the opportunity is pretty big. Again, we have two websites, a newsletter, and this podcast, and uh, we're hoping to average around two to 3,000 downloads a month minimum right now for this just this month alone, and that's just the beginning. Who knows where this is going to go? So the potential uh, return on your investment in terms of investing in us as a sponsor uh, is going to be pretty big. Um, I, I just with already where we're at now, it's, it's been awesome. So anyways, guys, I'm going to get out of here so I can get this show out and about. Uh, I was going to get done last night, but we had a really bad thunderstorm blow through and actually just ended. It uh, started about 2 o'clock in the morning, and it is now uh, 11 o'clock Eastern time on Monday, mañana, and we are finally clearing up, and I didn't want to have any kind of you know power surges or any of that kind of stuff. So um, I decided to go ahead and just do it right now, and then later today I'll be doing episode uh, this for Wednesday and Friday, so we just have these out. That way, when you guys are on your way to work or heading out to the studio, these shows will be up and running and ready to be listened to. And again, thank you guys so much for your support and listening and the downloads and the reviews and the ratings. It's just been freaking awesome. You guys rock. Love you. Have a beautiful week. Bye-bye. My guest is a self-taught glass artist whose work has evolved through trial and error. He has surrounded himself with like-minded artists at Hidden Oak Studios in Austin, Texas, where he continuously strives to create his best work. With very little formal education, this self-taught flame worker is always raising his own bar as he fine-tunes his techniques daily. He's a family man, Disney aficionado, and a humble pirate. It's a pleasure to introduce a friend and a fellow Disney nut, Chris Dickey, a.k.a. Goblin King. What is going on, my dude? How are you? How, how's that? How is it, man? Life is good. Awesome. Hell yeah, brother. Same here. Thank you so much for coming on the show. It's uh, exciting to have you on. You know, we, you and I have been oh, talking uh, for a long time, and so it's definitely a pleasure to bring you on the show. 
Thank you, brother. It's an honor. Hell yeah. So, uh, yeah, man. So I was like, let's kind of start off with a little bit of background, like where you started, uh, any influences that you have in your glass and, uh, any kind of, uh, surround old, you know, people around you that kind of helped you learn your techniques and, uh, you know, yeah. that kind of fun stuff. Yeah, dude. I'm, um, you know, where I found glass was Disney. That was where I, uh, that's where my, my first, you know, I remember falling in love with glass. I was like eight years old. And I had gotten separated from my family for a little bit. And uh, when I was found, I was found in the glass room. And I had been there for I don't know how long. And I was able to uh, uh, watch this kid make a Mickey Mouse out of glass. And it blew my mind. You know, I didn't really understand what was going on or what was happening. But I knew that I liked it. And I knew that it was it looked fun. And I always wanted to try it. But the problem, you know, where was I going to learn type of, type of deal was my whole thing. And I was eight and, you know. It was, it was a thing for the future. And then whenever I grew up and um, started traveling around, I went to this shop uh, in South Lake Tahoe called Heads Up. And I'll never forget it. And it's like an A-framed building right there in South Lake Tahoe. And I walked in that door, and to the, my right, they had these cases that were built into the wall with, like, dude, it was the most gnarly glass i had ever seen i'd never seen anything like it before Hell yeah. and right ne right next to it was a picture of this dude just uh raging raging it out you know and i'm like i don't know i might be 20 21 and this dude's just raging his fire and i asked the guy behind the counter who he was and it turned out his name was darby so i was like well i've got to learn more about darby and i went out there and i started uh you know researching and looking you know and, and learning at what all glass was out there. You know, I learned to people like Jason Lee and um, names like that, you know. So those were my, you know, if you want to talk about, like, what lit my fire, what really <clears throat> it sparked my imagination and see what was possible with glass, it's, it's definitely attributed to those two individuals specifically. And that's, you know, why a lot of my work has to do with bright colors and lines, you know, because... That's that's what my brain has always loved. That's what I've always, um, you know, when I went to the shops whenever I was a kid and I was looking at all this, you know, the glass in the stores, that was what I was looking for. I was looking for bright, uh, distorted lines that, uh, that tripped my brain out. I guess I don't know. Yeah. That was what I wanted to do. Later down the line, I, um, I got into a situation where I was able to work uh, with some buddies at a smoke shop and whenever I was working there I met a guy named Will Menzies um, but he goes by box fan and you know he might uh, single-handedly have been the one guy that that changed the whole course of my life he whenever I met him you know he was doing his thing and I was working at this shop and we developed a relationship over time and um, through time i ended up owning that smoke shop and we did you know i did business for years um just just as a smoke shop but things even with all the money and, and blah 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 that comes with owning a smoke shop especially during the times of you know uh herbal incense and all that when money was really fluid in the smoke shop scene <clears throat> which is you know obviously prevalent to all the glass blowers because you know that kind of had a huge impact on what helped blow the glass scene up you know people mm -hmm. had money smoke shops had money that they didn't have before right and uh anyway through all that um you know I, I was really unhappy things weren't going well and um you know around june of 2011 i called up box fan and i said you know i wanted to come up and i wanted to play with them on the torch for a couple of days get away i needed a break blah 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 so i go up there and box fan puts me on the torch for the first time and within a year, I had sold my smoke shop and, like, you know, basically left everything behind because, you know, once that, that fire's lit inside of you, it's coming up. That's, that's all there's left. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's so impossible I, to put out. I sold the smoke shop and Box Fan um, taught me a few things. And after a year, I sold it. And Box Fan hooked me up with a guy named Craig Lewis. And Craig Lewis is, I mean, I don't, I don't know many other people in Austin that's his OG you know he's a part of the scene he's deep a part of the scene here in Austin Texas he's one of the originals you know he's been in 
the, the glass scene here in Austin over a decade. So when Boxfan told me he wanted to put me in his studio, <laughs> of course I was, I was really, really happy. And, oh, yeah. you know, when I got to Craig's studio, Craig kind of took me under his wing uh, after some time. And that's basically the story. You know, I, once, once Craig taught me a few things and I could find a way to make a dollar and eat off a of glass, then, you know, it's just building it from there. Yeah, man, that's awesome. Yeah, it's amazing when it's all it takes is just like one person to show you the torch, to get you on there, to melt some glass, and then you're hooked. It's like you're hooked, you know, right? it's it's terrible. You know, but it's well, awesome. You know what's crazy? What's crazy about it is like, uh, you know, I can pinpoint it down to one defining moment that changed everything. It's and it's all about class. So yeah, know, and it's, and it's good. It's part of my life. Yeah, man, and, and I appreciate the fact that you also are all about being humble and giving respect to those that paved the way for you in terms of showing you the reins, you know, because, you know, it's, it's amazing in other areas, not in the glass scene, but in, you know, areas out there you see, it's like you want to see people that are humble and, like, go back to their roots and really explain where they come from. And when you see, like, you know, Snoop Dogg or some big name out there that's like, this is where I grew up in this little ass house in the ghetto and this is where I am now, but they appreciate and they go back to their roots and really show, you know, the roots of where they came from. You know, it's that's what it's all about. Your that's your story. You know, so it's so I appreciate you sharing that with us. Coming up on the next episode of the Wise Guy Radio Show. It's reached that point in the past fifteen, twenty years. You know what I mean? Yeah. Twenty years ago, it was a dying art. That's what's so cool about it to me. Like. 15 years ago, there was nobody like, <laughs> like you had to, you had to know somebody who knew somebody, you know what I mean? Yeah. You could, it was a dying art, like uh, leather working or metal smithing or any of that. Thank you guys so much for listening to this episode of the Wise Guy Radio Show. If you have any questions, comments, or remarks, please leave them in the show notes page area where it says comments. We'll see you soon. Have a wise night. Oh, I'm